Hey guys, Coach Alex and Coach Sue here with Physique Development, and today we are going to discuss and educate you on the barbell glute bridge. This is a movement that we have utilized for many years within our clients' glute training and have seen incredible results. Let's go ahead and dig in um, and get us into the setup with Sue here. So what our goal within this movement is going to be training the glutes through full hip extension and getting to that fully shortened range within the glutes. So as we get set up, Sue is going to sit on the ground and her first initial thought process is getting the shoulder blades right at the crease or the edge of this bench. So as she sits up, she's going to find that positioning. She's going to place her feet shoulder width apart. And as she gets into a fully hip extended position, she's going to want to prioritize the ankle and the knee being in full alignment. And what you guys will see within the foot placement for her is that she has plates there. And the reason being for this is that we want to have three points of emphasis that need to be in perfect alignment. And those three points are going to be her contact point with the bench, her positioning within her glutes, and then her knees. As you'll see, that is going to be a perfect line between those three positions, and that's going to be the point of hip extension that we want to achieve. And so as Sue is getting set up within this movement, she is going to contract the abdomen and drive the hips down. As she is finding that end range for her glutes, she's going to ensure that the knee and the ankle stay in alignment with one another. If she allows for those knees to travel behind the ankle, this is not a bad thing, but this is going to recruit more muscle tissue. And when we're speaking on the glute bridge, what we want to emphasize is simply hip extension and hip flexion. And that is going to maximize the amount of tension that is placed on the glutes themselves. By allowing those knees to travel behind the ankle, we're going to recruit the lumbar tissue of the lower back, as well as the quads, which again, is not a bad thing, but when we're trying to maximize the glutes, we want to keep the mechanics in this position. So she's going to have immense tension in her glutes still. She's going to be keeping her spine in a neutral position by contracting her abdomen. She's going to initiate the movement out of this position by driving the glutes vertically and contracting them hard. What she is going to do as well is going to crunch down slightly on the abdomen while keeping her neck in a neutral and slightly tilted forward position. She's not going to crunch forward with her head as that's going to put her neck in a compromised position, but it is going to be slightly dipped down, if you will. And so as she continues through this movement, she'll go ahead and give you guys a couple of repetitions so you can see it in action. Five common mistakes that we see within our clients when performing this movement is going to be, number one, they are going into lumbar flexion and just allowing for their hips to kind of dip and not keeping their spine in a neutral position. And so what we tell our clients is that we want that spine to be almost like a steel rod. It's going to move as one piece. And so we allow for the pelvis to work more adequately as well as keeping them in a much safer position. Number two is going to be foot positioning. So individuals will have their feet too far out and be out of alignment of that ankle and knee positioning that we talked about, which is going to limit their range of motion as well as put them in a compromised position. And they also may have their feet too far in, which is also going to put them in a compromised position of getting to that full degree of hip extension. The third mistake that we commonly see is going to be the back too far up on the bench itself. And this is going to put them in a shortened range of motion as well as not putting them in the most advantageous position to get into full hip extension. On the flip side of that, having the back not far enough on the bench, which is going to put their neck in a compromised position, as well as not allow for a lot of force to be generated through those hips. Number four is the bench being too tall for the individual's biomechanics. As you'll see from this video, Sue is not being able to get to full hip extension because her knee, hip, and upper back are not in full alignment. And her upper back is going to reside higher than that knee positioning and going to not allow for her to get to full hip extension. Number five is going to be not getting to full hip extension. Individuals doing a partial repetition when performing this because the load is either too high or the other aspects in which we spoke on were misaligned in those different factors.
Thank you guys so much for watching. If you're interested in any other videos, then definitely check out the rest of our YouTube channel. Or if you wanna look at some articles or some different resources, check us out at physiquedevelopment.com or other social channels.